You're listening to All Things 3D, where we talk about the world of fabricating, designing, and capturing in the third dimension. Hello, everyone. Hi, this is Mike Balzer, and this is All, Thing, All Things 3D's 3D Tech Closet for 1-19-2018. And again, I apologize for not doing the episode on Tuesday. Um, few things occurred, one being uh, <clears throat> some of my deliveries didn't come on time. In fact, uh, if you've been following any of my tweets, I basically had uh, some disparaging words to say to Amazon, um, for one, sending me a unit late, and then on top of that, not sending me the complete unit, which is this thing that I'm wearing on my head here. and. Uh, because of that, <clears throat> I was not be able to do the demos, but sadly, some of the software uh, that I'm going to be discussing today uh, also had some issues uh, getting up and running. So over the last couple of days, I've been able to accomplish that. And today or this morning, I've been able to finally get demos up and running on all four of the motion capture systems. So on that note, um, let's see. Actually, I don't know if some of you saw this. I'll go ahead and drag this over. And But <laughs> I put this out just in case uh, the Amazon drivers still had a problem finding my house. But uh, the real issue was that it wasn't Amazon. It was uh, UPS. And sadly, it was somebody who's been working with me for a year now and for whatever reason made the assumption that I had moved which I had not. And uh, <clears throat> so with that being the case, he decided to not only the day before take some items for return that were supposed to be returned, but didn't actually um, uh, deliver the package that I needed yesterday. So I didn't get it till about seven o'clock. So I had a long evening as well as early morning to try and get this show done. But I think I've accomplished that. So let's get started. So let's look at some of the things that I've reviewed and basically hands on. I'm not going to go through a lot of detail towards the end of the show. Uh, I'm actually going to combine two units and see how they work. So if you want to hang around for that, that's fine. Um, if not, um, right now it'll be kind of like a hands on uh, experience. So let's look at the first item, which is, uh, let me find my screen here the Samsung Odyssey Windows Mixed Reality Headset. And uh, I guess I can take this stupid thing off my head. Um, there's a reason I'm wearing this. This is one of the options in the motion capture, but uh, we'll talk a lot more about that a little bit. Okay, so <clears throat> if you look at the screen there, you'll see that uh, this is the Samsung Odyssey and some of its strengths are the fact that it uses much higher, I wouldn't say much higher resolution, but higher resolution um, OLED panels than the uh, the HTC Vive, as well as the Oculus, as a few others. Um, but also some of the other mixed reality headsets, um, not necessarily in the horizontal dimension, but in the vertical dimension. So let's see if there's some specs so that we can just kind of go through it. Uh, so what do we have? Uh, this basically tells you the type of machine, uh, computer acquired. So that didn't really tell me anything at all. Okay, so let me see if my memory serves me correctly. I believe it has a vertical resolution of 1660, which is about 200 pixels more than the, uh, the mixed reality headsets from the other companies. Um, also, I think these panels are a little larger. And maybe at this point, I'll just jump into my screen again and actually bring it forward. So here it is. One of the things that I noticed right off the bat is this thing was heavier uh, than our previous units from that I've tried with the mixed reality headsets. Um, it does seem a little sturdier, but I've noticed that either they use heavy plastic or they just over engineer it. But uh, it is heavier, but in saying that, it does balance well, and the cushion that they use is fairly flexible. The other nice feature is they include 
um, we might call it portable headset speakers, just like the Oculus, as well as the new HTC Vive um, headset band. <clears throat> and they work pretty well. And then it has, I thought, a thicker cable, a little heavier than the one that comes with the, uh, the Acer or the HP. And like the other two, uh, it's fairly lengthy. I'd say it's about three meters, about 10 feet, um, so that you can plug in both an HDMI as well as a USB uh, connection. And as you notice, it's blue, so it's the USB 3 connection, which is required because not only are you pushing through the HDMI, the panels, but you're also transferring to RGB camera, or not RGB, I'm, I'm assuming they're monochrome, but you're um, pushing two camera images back to the computer. Now, when I did the breakdown or teardown of the uh, HP unit, I did not see any special processors that took advantage of the uh, uh, the streams and then possibly did some processing before sending it to the computer. So I do believe the two streams are raw, even though they may be multiplex, uh, which then head into your PC. Um, in saying that, um, I found that even with the uh, a couple of nooks that I have, notably the i5 with the higher uh, Intel graphics, what was it, the, I think it's 620, but it's the higher version of the two. And if you're using the 8th generator uh, generation, I think that's the only thing that's included now. Um, it ran pretty well. Um, the graphics weren't the best. Uh, I would say if you want to get the best capability out of this, get yourself a more powerful uh, PC, probably something with an i5 or i7, and at least an NVIDIA 1060. As you know, I've been trying to push a 1050, the GTX with four gigabytes, and it has had, no pun intended, mixed results. So, uh, so what do I think about it? Yes, it definitely has a higher resolution, but because it's using OLED, which I'm assuming is also using a Pentile style um, sub-pixel um, I did feel the screen door effect seemed more prominent than the Acer or the HP, um, <clears throat> but it was more detailed than what you get out of the HTC Vive or the Oculus. And I felt the lenses were good. However, I don't know if you can see this in here, they are Fresnel lenses. So I was not sure if they would be Fresnel lenses or not. Uh, they appear to be, uh, and they are cut in an I wouldn't say an unusual manner, but a unique, uh, almost egg shape. Um, and they do seem, well, they seem somewhat flat. So I don't think there is, you know, there's a little bit of curvature. Uh, so they do something similar to what the Oculus does. Uh, the thing that I don't like, and some people have already made points about it, is these little flaps here uh, to block light on your nose. They kind of pinch my nose. And what I did with the HP unit is kind of just, uh, cut them off a little bit in order to, at least for my nose. Other than that, the uh, foam is nice and comfortable and it fits well. And I'll put it on. And then there's a ratchet on the back, which I really appreciate. Sadly, the Acer does not include that in the developer version. I don't know if they sell it separate, um, but the HP has it. And I think most of the other uh, mixed reality headsets, and of course, uh, the newer HTC Vive, as well as the Oculus. Actually, the Oculus does not have a ratchet system. Um, so, and <clears throat> I have an image that I'll show in a little bit, but what I found is that I've always had problems with the Oculus's fit, and I have figured a way in order to make it fit better for my fat face. Um, but, you know, if you already have a slim face, it probably fits you just right. But in saying that, <clears throat> I really like the headset. Um, I also like the fact that with the mixed reality uh, system, you only have one HDMI connection. Notably, it has to be an HDMI 2 and a USB 3. So just make sure when you're out there looking for a laptop that they have those provisions. And I also would suggest um, getting something with discrete graphics um, or at least the highest end uh, in, uh, integrated graphics if you can. And one of the reasons we're going to be talking about the next item uh, is because I'm still looking for that sweet spot in a mobile unit uh, that's inexpensive. And even with my budget VR backpack, it's still approached $900, $1,000 with batteries. 
And then you have to start thinking. Now you're getting into laptop range. Uh, maybe a laptop might better be a better deal, but I have not really found a laptop with NVIDIA graphics uh, at 1050, 10, even uh, 1050, uh, less than thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars um, And if you're just doing, let's say, uh, architectural visualizations where you don't have a lot of animation, you might get by with just a a small Acer laptop like the one I have or some of the new MX150s. And I guess there's going to be an MX160 coming out as well. And that might actually help in the future. Okay, so on that note, uh, I'm going to put this up. And like I said, later on in the show, I'm going to connect this to the Acer and we'll go from there. Okay, so speaking of the Acer, uh, once I saw that... Uh, CES was showing a lot of, uh, what do you want to call it, uh, laptops or a few laptops. Uh, the Verge and a few others were showing things from, uh, what was it, HP, I think even Asus is going to have one, based upon the new Intel chipset with the combo, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, the Radeon chip combined on one substrate. Um I was very interested in it, but I've noticed the pricing still seemed to be above $1,000. And then I was reading about the NVIDIA's, what do you want to call it, uh, uh, equivalence or version that to compete with that. And they've actually had them out last year. And that was the 150. And like I said, the 160 that's going to be coming out later this year. So with that being said, um, let's jump over to uh, the Acer website. So this is the unit. Let's make sure I got the right one here. I think it's the middle one here. They have the Swift 3 in three brands on their website. And so you're going to make sure that you're getting the right one. The They have two that are using discrete graphics, but I believe it's the middle one here. It's actually the more expensive of $779. Um, I found it on Amazon for about $799. So this actually might be a better price, especially if it's free. Uh, uh, shipping. But again, keep in mind, and maybe I'm just because Amazon does such a great job most of the time of providing things next day or two days uh, for very little cost. In fact, if you're prime, I'd say probably, what, maybe a dollar. Um, that's something to consider even at the higher price, but I couldn't find it for more than $7.99. The fact is they just got them in and you can buy it here for $7.79. Um, something to consider. So this one does include the MX150. Um, there's a lot of reviews out there. It obviously is not uh, the same as the uh, GTX 1050 Ti with the four gigs. It's only a two gig discrete chip. But if it provides a middle ground for mixed reality so that uh, you can still use your mixed reality headset with let's say medium graphics or medium resolution. Uh, I don't know exactly what they refer to, but there are different steps, medium or even low end uh, graphics. This might be a solution. And again, since it's under $800, has a built-in battery, um, has uh, USB 3 as well as an external USB or HDMI port. This could be an interesting option for somebody who's trying to do mobile mixed reality headsets. Obviously that's something I'm going to be testing here uh, within the next week or two. So uh, there's been basically four star reviews on this, four and a half star reviews. Uh, um, it gets good ratings. Some people don't like the screen, but obviously if you're going to be buying this for mixed reality headsets, you probably don't care that much. Uh, the cool thing is with, uh, since I found that with the mixed reality system, you still need a secondary monitor. Obviously, that's built in. The other thing is, if you're going to be using a mobile system, you're going to need a battery. That's also built in. So the problem is, how do you utilize this um, in, let's say, an efficient manner, an ergonomic manner? So I'm going to be looking at creating a, a bracket for the system so that, that it either goes on your back or maybe uh, extends in front, and then you can close it up and basically walk around with it. Um, <clears throat> it's, they say it gets up to 10 hours, I'm assuming, and that's an extremely low power mode. Um, I do not know, especially if you're driving the headset, what your battery time will be. I'm going to say maybe about an hour, but again, you're running this thing at 
full blast. So it'll be interesting to find out how it will play out um, when running a headset. But uh, even with my Nook with the Anton Bauer, Bauer battery, <clears throat> which I think what was a 660 milliampers per hour, I was able to get about two to three hours. But again, I wasn't driving a panel, but you could turn that off. Um, but I was driving the battery as well as the Nook and the headset. And then I got about two to three hours. So we'll see what happens with this. Um, the, the cool thing is none of the discrete components without LCD panels, either my budget VR backpack or the Nook, could I get for about the same price. And then on top of that, you get a nice laptop and it actually feels quality. In fact, let me grab it. So let me jump back to my main monitor. So here you go, it's uh, all metal and it feels very sturdy. And now I don't know your opinion of Acer's, but uh, I've had a few, my wife has had a few and they've worked out well. It's fairly thin about as thin as any other 14 inch. And more importantly, it's a 14 inch 1080p screen. Um, there it's up and running. Notice it is very glossy. Um, that is one of the complaints with it. Um, but again, if you're buying this for the purpose of driving a VR headset, you may not care. Um, so other than that, it's very compact. As you can see, it could probably fit very easily on your back, more so than the 15.6 inch type devices. So literally you would have to create some type of bracket system so that you could wear it on your back and keeping in mind, you do not want to block the ventilation ports on this. Um, I do have a video. Uh, let's see if I want to show it. Uh, let's see where it's at. Here we go. So I'm not going to show, I'm just going to show. Some uh, but uh, essentially they've torn it apart. And as you can see there, it's, not only has a copper heat sink exchange system, there's a fan in here. So this is an active cooling system. So keep that in mind. But here's the battery. Now I can't read that it's upside down, um, but it probably says in the specs here. So if I go back to what the actual battery is, and I have a feeling it's about the same as my Anton Bauer, which was about $150, $200. So you add that to the cost of all the other components in your Kind of looking at the same thing. So let's see what the data sheet says. Okay, so actually it's oh, 3,220 milliampers per hour. So that's a fairly hefty battery. In fact, that's pretty decent. Uh, so as you can see in the image, um, it's a fairly large battery. Adds a little heft, but it actually is lighter than my budget VR backpack. So I'm pretty or pretty excited to see what happens with it. Uh, let me jump back to my main screen again. So as you can see here, two USB, HDMI, a uh, USB-C, but sadly it is not a uh, Thunderbolt style, and a headphone jack, and then an SD, as well as another uh, USB port. I believe it's a USB 3 as well, but for charging. So it... Uh, Pretty impressed with it uh, so far. Um, I've already upgraded it. And uh, like I said, if you want to hang around towards the end of the show, I'm actually going to hook it up. Have not done it yet, so it could fail. So I'm not going to waste your time with that right now. All right, let me put it off to the side here. All right, so I think that's enough for toys. Actually, one more item that I want to show. And uh, let me pull that out of the folder. And is for those of you who already have an Oculus. Um, this is, I basically took an HTC Vive cushion and you can probably find an Oculus, which is about 10 bucks. And I took out, there's a little plastic insert. And then I had some double sticky tape that you use for cell phones. And I was able to apply it to the edge and there's enough of a, an edge there and just push this down into it. And if you notice, notably, if you're familiar with the Oculus, there's this nose piece here. And for me, it kind of pinched my nose. So that's gone. So it does a couple of things. One, and this might actually be too thin, it brings the lenses closer to your eyes. And if you're familiar with VR, if you can bring the lenses closer, um, you can actually improve your FOV. Now, keep in mind, some of these systems are built for space between you and the lens. 
So some of them actually will interfere with the focus. Um, but more importantly, if you bring your eyes closer, that FV extends out to past uh, the panels themselves. So you start to see some uh, disruption on the edges. So you want to make a compromise. But some people who have played with some thinner um, cushions for their uh, uh, Oculus have found that their FOV improves. I felt more immersed. In fact, there's a, uh, what's it called, air car, but it looks like a Blade Runner simulator. It's free on the Oculus store. And uh, I had a heck of a time with that. And I did feel more immersed with this, played a few things with it. Uh, and most important, the Oculus now is more comfortable for me. Like I said, about $10. And I think you can get this double-sided uh, tape for about five bucks. Um, I'm sure you got plenty of it there that you'll have an excess, but you may find other uses for it. And that's about it. Uh, I would buy the, uh, what is it? I think they have an eight millimeter version. No. Yeah. I think it was an eight millimeter version. Uh, so a little less than a centimeter um, to use with it. Provide you a nice thick adhesive uh, uh, surface to work with. So, and you can base that the tape isn't too secure. So if you get tired of that, you can always pull it off, but I'm very happy with that. So keep that in mind. If you're wondering what this cut out here that wasn't done very well, this allows the uh, proximity sensor to determine if you've got a headset on or not. And uh, with that being the case, that really helped um, for my, my aspect. So, um, so there you go. All right. So that's about it for the, uh, that particular area. So let's get to Basically, the most important thing of this show that I've spent so much time and obviously delayed it to so some of the of you that were eager to see it earlier, and that is looking at um, basically four HTC Vive systems. And let's go here and right to there. And we'll go right to the first one. Um, if you know or if you've been following this for some time, either the 3D in review and then the the latest issues of the 3D Tech Closet. I have been in discussion with Jasper. He provides not only tools for um, motion capture for the Connect version one and version two. If you watch those earlier episodes, I told you that I was actually going to be looking at his HTC Vive. And he says Oculus Rift, which is true because he actually uses the OpenVR um, SDK in order to capture the system. Um, so it's a little different than the others. The other thing to keep in mind, and there's a video that you can watch. I'm not going to do it because I have some of my own videos to show. Um, but the cool thing is that it actually captures in XYZ as well as rotational information of all your sensors. And it can capture up to 11 of them. So in my case, I've got three um, trackers now. And then I have the two controllers as well as the headset. And so I put two on my feet, one on my hip or my lower spine, and then two on uh, for my hands. And then you can basically track them. So what, uh, and here you can go through and identifies exactly what it does. Um, the fact that it is open VR, you can actually have some other um, uh, open VR application running at the same time. So let's say a game, and you can literally record your tracker movements as you're progressing through a game. So that could be an interesting thing. I found um, that it's going to be very useful what I'm planning to do, and I'll um, discuss that a little bit later. And that's actually taking the uh, chatting with Vincent environment, the, the bedroom, and actually walking around in it in order to capture the uh, the animation that I can use later on. And I actually have some examples later on with one of the others out there. So Let's see what the price is. Let's go to shop. If I remember correctly, uh, where do we got, guys? It's 139, but keep in mind that allows up to 11 sensors. Uh, the only thing that you need to remember that some of these other solutions uh, provide, and I found that it can be good and bad. If you have animation skills, if you know what IK or inverse uh, kinetics are, kinematics, sorry, um, you probably don't need one of these other solutions. They're useful. Um, in fact, when I get to the Unity um, open source version, the guy does a good job of providing a PDF, or actually it's a docx file, that tells you 
what uh, inverse kinematics are, and you can go ahead and read about it. But essentially what that does is it allows you to only have a few joints, and then it makes decisions when you move those joints, how the rest of the limb is going to work. And so, it, you know, it's basically assuming by how you rotate your wrist, how you rotate your feet, how your actual legs and arms are going to work. Now, clearly, the more uh, points that you have that are being sampled, the better that interpretation is going to be. But if you're on limited funds like I am, three trackers, two controllers, and an HND gets you some pretty cool results, and we'll see that. But keep in mind, this allows you to record everything. So if you wanted to come back and actually apply that, uh, let's say in Motion Builder or some of these other applications, you can do so, but just, and then apply the IKs that are part of that system. For instance, Poser has IK on some of their models as well as DAS. So you don't necessarily need an IK system unless you really need to work within one of the engines because you can take this data, bring it in, and then apply the IKs in one of these other areas like Motion Builder, uh, Maya, for example, um, DAZ or Poser, and just take that information. And he provides both FBX, which if you remember, is a better solution, and that comes from Jasper himself, or BBH, which is the older system, uh, which we will also export out. So, and it also captures the video out of it and uh, audio. So $139, I think that's a pretty good deal. All right, let's move on to the next item. Now, again, I'm going to be showing some demonstrations a little bit later, but right now I'm going to go through and talk about each of the ones that I explored. Now, and I think it's Ikenema, Ikenema. I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but let's say it is. This is the Orion product, and this also allows you to track HTC and Vibe. Unlike uh, Jasper's, not only does it record the points, but it also records IK movement, so you can actually have a full body. Uh, if we play this little motion here, you can see um, she has trackers on her feet, one on her hips or basic lower spine, and then two in his, her hands, and then I think she has a tracker on her head. So she actually has four trackers. Now, what's good about that is that you don't have something covering your eyes and that way, if you have an actor or somebody actually, a talent performing, uh, they have clear observation in front of them and won't be blinded by it. But if you're actually wanting to record what you're doing in a VR space, um, that, you know, is obviously an option. Plus, you have to spend another $100 for another tracker. Okay, so you can get a 14-day trial, but... I don't know if they fixed it yet, but in my case, and there have been others that have complained about it over the last two days, and luckily um, they were able to get me an actual key that works, so I was able to do my own testing with it. Um, but the current demo testing does not seem to work. It says invalid key, so make sure you contact them, but I'm pretty sure that they will actually have it up and running um, by the time you download it. You have to sign up, create a user ID for it, uh, and then you can download it and try it out for 14 days. I don't know what the limitations are with it, um, but then uh, the thing that kind of, you know, I tried to get more information on this. Uh, some of their other products, they have a indie as well as educational. Uh, they did not get back to me if there, there was or was not. Uh, I notice here, this is 400 pounds. So let's go out and see what 400 pounds is. Um, no. So $554. So I don't know if that is the American price for it, but uh, it is a little steep, in my opinion, considering there are other options out there for far less. Um, but what do you get for this? Well, one, you get a standalone application, plus you get uh, both an Unreal as well as a Unity. I wouldn't say, well, I guess you get a plugin, but it works kind of unique. You still run the standalone application, and then you essentially use the RTSP port, um, control port, in order to send the information. At least I tried out the Unreal version, and it seemed to work fairly straightforward. Um, so... Uh, you can still do the same thing that I wanted to do as well as use it as a standalone product without having 
anything other than Steam VR and the HTC Vive setup. Um, but considering both the Unreal and the Unity engines are free, um, you know, that to me doesn't seem like a barn burner from my perspective, but it is fairly easy to use right out of the box. Um, so then let's move on to another one. So we're now we're looking at about 550. Uh, the Breckel system was 139. Uh, again, the Orion does allow IK recording as well. So full body. Um, it does support both the Unreal, the Unity, as well as their own uh, skeletons. And that's very important. If you want to get this thing up and running and directly using one of the gaming engine skeletons, um, this might be a reason to go with that. Maybe the extra cost would be beneficial. The th problem I found with both uh, Jasper's system is that uh, it was a skeleton. I think he was based out of Motion Builder. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Jasper. But uh, uh, with that being said, it's not directly converted, especially in my case. I made the mistake of starting with a Mixamo skeleton, which I now regret doing because I've had to do a lot of work in order to translate these. All right, so let's move on to the Vive uh, mocap system. This is the Unreal version. This is done from Yuri N. Kalanin. I again, apologize if I'm not pronouncing it. I believe he is uh, from Russia. And uh, the, the funny thing is both these two companies, uh, actually all three of them, no, let's say these three, and I think the other one is from um, China or Hong Kong. I have to go back and look. So all of them are in a different time zone. So the, the sad thing is that by um, communicating with them, I normally don't get an answer. And even though I stay up late, sometimes they obviously people aren't there for me. Uh, so I get a few hours delay and an actual response. I will have to give credit uh, to Yuri. Not only did he provide uh, me a full demo and to work with, um, but uh, He's been very supportive on my questions. Uh, sadly, I hadn't had a time or didn't get much of a response from Ikinima. That's or Ikinami. I don't know. I apologize if I'm not saying it correctly, but yeah, I, I'm assuming it's going to be Ikinima. But there, um, they didn't give me responses until today when I basically said, "Hey, I'm dead in the water." Um, and then they finally provided me a key. But other than that, they didn't answer my questions. Yuri was very helpful and provided me not only information on his application, uh, but clearly, um, as you can go through there, he has it well supported. And again, this is about $139 as well. And uh, provides not only uh, the C++ classes, but a project file with blueprints that you can utilize for yourself um, and full documentation, which I have a folder that I can bring up uh, a little bit later and example project, which was very useful. And then obviously, if you just want to see how it works, you can try the executable demo and uh, just launch it. And if you've got the, hell, I don't even think you need Unreal uh, engine on it you just bring it up yourself and uh, so it was very useful and he was very helpful and obviously some people have a lot of questions i don't know how well he's doing but if you're developing an unreal this almost seems like a no-brainer and he does a very good job of supporting it and provides some really a really good project to work out of and i'll show you what i did with it a little bit later and then uh he also provides more information on the mocap. And then I found out, um, I think it might be his middle name, he has a YouTube channel um, that he goes by Anton with. And he has a lot of the uh, information. In fact, he just put this one up there. I think he did it for my benefit, but thank you, uh, Yuri. And this one actually shows you how to use custom skeletons because obviously I have. Vincent is a custom skeleton and um, how to get it in there and working. I have not had time to actually go through each one of the steps that he's shown here, um, but I will do so this weekend. And that will really be very helpful because then whatever animations I create will already be translated. And that obviously is very important if you want a workflow that uh, is optimized and has obviously time performance. Um, plus he has a lot of other FS, um, demos in here to work with. But something else that I thought was very interesting, and I've kind of, uh, and I'm going to click on his videos, he's been working on a uh, 
what do you, you call it here? Uh, an interaction system where you interact with the characters. And obviously that is one of my goals. And I've had some ideas on how I'm going to do that myself. But the fact is that it already seems fairly polished. I asked him when this plugin will be available. Uh, he has no date in sight yet, but uh, maybe I'll be able to get a an early version of this to be able to try out. But uh, he clearly has uh, some software skills and uh, obviously has some very cool ideas here. So go ahead and take a look at it and uh, try out the executable. All right, so let's move on to the last item. And that was, I found this just doing a web search. And this is actually a, a, a GitHub Vive IK, uh, IK, excuse me, IK demo for um, the Unity system. And so I have actually tried all four of them. And this one is very interesting because it's free. Now, uh, clearly, I would assume that if you're really going to use it, you probably want to help support these efforts. But you can download it, and it's essentially the full project. Uh, I've actually used it in the latest um, beta of Unity. So what I think is it 2018.2b now? I, I'm not familiar, but uh, it did seem to work. So uh, you had to recompile some of the uh, uh, scripts, but uh, I did get it to work. And actually, it's fairly straightforward and seems to work pretty well. So if you want to explore this, all of them have demos. But if you just want to tinker and uh, just play around with it as a hobby, uh, this might be something. And what I said uh, earlier was kind of cool. Let me see if I can bring that up real quick. Um, let's see. Let's go to docs. So each of them have some pretty good documentation. But I like this one because, and let's bring it up. Oops, did I get the wrong one? No, that's, sorry, wrong one. Here we go. Is And I converted this to a PDF. It was in a docx format. Uh, what was cool about this one is that uh, he captured, or basically explains what IK is. So he gives a nice little tutorial. And then also shows how to actually um, mount these. And what I would recommend, he's got uh, tennis shoes on here, get yourself some loafers or, you know, some of these things that you can slip on. Because you once you get these on, um, you don't really want to remove them. So kind of spend a few extra dollars and get a shoe. I've noticed some of the motion tracking systems, the more expensive ones actually have shoes with the built in. I would highly recommend it. Um, he also talks about ensuring that you have a stiff bore because literally you want this to be a parallel plane to your body. Um, you don't want it moving back and forth. So I actually took that to heart. And then he talks about what the IKs are, which I thought was a really good uh, little tutorial, if you're not familiar with it, a primer on how it works. So it would be a good little thing to read if you're not familiar with it and why you know, essentially you can only use a limited number of trackers to actually create, I wouldn't say the illusion, but obviously animation that seems somewhat realistic. But again, remember, um, there are inaccuracies because you're basically speculating where the bone that is not uh, being tracked is supposed to be. And I found myself having to remember my, where my hands were being rotated because that affected uh, where my joints were. Okay, so, so he has a good little description. And then he talks about the bend plane. So if you want a great little tutorial and some really good information on how to set it up, uh, he does a great job. And as mentioned, it's free. So if you've got, like I said, Trackers are $99 now, and I think they're in stock. Uh, it took me a while to finally get them. So it's like $300. Obviously, you have to have an HTC Vibe. Um, so below $1,000, you can have a very interesting tracking system um, for little cost. Uh, just minimize that. So with that being said, try this out. If you haven't done anything, it's free. And uh, like I said, contribute or at least give the guy some kudos. I plan to. James Barra, I'm assuming. 
Um, I'm assuming because the, the gentleman inside uh, some of those images was, uh, yeah, so f oh, actually he's from HTC himself. That's interesting. So Jane Zong or Shang from HTC. Thank you. And uh, so there you go. All right. So let's let's see where we're at. Okay. So as far as the um, Vive trackers, you can buy them here. As mentioned, you could buy them on Amazon. Uh, I noticed some people seem to be scalping the price for like $149. Um, or you can buy them in a bundle, this racket sports set for $149, which I think they also included uh, on Amazon as well. So you could try that. And in fact, I got a used one, which is probably my mistake. That's why the first one didn't come with a tracker. Um, but uh, I got mine for like 130 So I saved a few bucks and actually didn't get the paddles. I got a gun. So they have a special bundle with a gun. Uh, more because I want to take a look at the connection because it actually has uh, the spring pins uh, that allow you to connect a switch to it. So I want to see how they did that um, and probably take a... a play with it. It's like a cheap plastic gun that's somewhat weighted, but uh, you get what you pay for, I guess. All right. So there's your trackers. So if you want them, don't need them in a hurry. I'd probably buy them directly from uh, HTC Vive. I do believe there's a little bit of a shipping charge uh, unless you want them overnight and then it jumps up to like $17. All right. So there you go. Um, let's get into the next item. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of talk over, because I don't think I have any audio, each of the examples um, that I have. And then I will actually have a, a remote uh, desktop connection to my main machine and actually show you uh, the process of setting it up. And so we'll get into this really, really quick. So let's jump over here. So this is the Breckel system. And as you can see there, um, it's very similar to the other uh, Breckel uh, desktop or user interfaces. You have the same record button, uh, and it allows you to essentially see the different, uh, I can't call them uh, sockets, I mean, the different positions of the HT. Here I'm walking around. And you can turn off the labels if you want to. Um, you can turn on textures uh, and objects so that they represent uh, what you're looking at. I found that this is kind of a nice idea because I don't, I want to make sure whatever I have tracking um, has a label. So when I go back to use the animation, I know where to put the, the point of animation. Uh, so that I think that's very useful. So there you are. I'm actually swinging my arms out. So it may be a little bit difficult to see. So I do this for a few minutes, and, and as you can see there, I'm recording it. And so I'll just, so now I'm going to play it back. Now, one thing I noticed, and I don't know if it's just my system, but even though it shows my FPS feeling fairly high, I noticed that it doesn't seem to run as fluidly. So I'll have to ask Jasper about that. It, again, might be something in my own system that's creating the problem, but it notice how it's just kind of, stepping along and then here you can reposition it so you can see uh, from different viewpoints so again remember it is capturing the data for each of the sensors it does not provide an actual skeleton or support it but as mentioned you can take this information and run this directly into one of the applications i mentioned uh, the more costly motion builder or even, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm assuming that you'll be able to bring this into um, Poser or Daz and utilize one of their skeletons um, in IK. You just, you'll probably have to assign the point so it matches a point on the skeleton. And then, again, you probably have to apply IKs in order for it to work properly. Have not tried it. Uh, it may just completely fail. But again, you could move them all separately, frame by frame, but it does give you a good place to start with and actually does a good job of tracking information. And another good point is that it's open VR, 
So you can actually have an application up and running that you can walk around in and just record your movement. So uh, it doesn't matter what that application is. It could be Unity, Unreal, a game, whatever. It would work. Uh, so that's a good point there. Okay, so I think that's about enough. I don't think I have anything else in here. Uh, oh, and then, uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out where it went. Um, I think I had to ex accept the the routine and then it wouldn't show up here, but I went to the desktop, it showed up and it stored it because I chose it to be stored as an FBX file and then just showed up on my desktop and I don't think it shows up there. So you can actually assign it to wherever you want. I just left whatever the default was. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the Jasper system. And again, I'm going to jump to, uh, not at this point, after I go through a little bit of my demo uh, footage that I captured, I'll go back and show you how easy it is to actually set them up. But, you know, if you got to go, um, there's great tutorials out there. So let's look at uh, the next item, which is the Orion system. So what I did here is tried to split the screen so that you can see me moving around in the, uh, the beta uh, Steam VR room. And notice nothing's happening over here <laughs> um, until I finally realized there I am. And I didn't find this out until later. And again, maybe that's what happens when you kind of skip reading all the instruction. But like the other systems, you basically have to go to a T-pose, um, press one of the buttons, and then it assigns where it thinks all of your um, uh, sensors should be. And it does it fairly quick. <laughs> So you can see there all you can, in fact, I think I had to go and switch it. You can leave it so it looks very similar to the Breckel system where all you see is the uh, the different units, the controllers and the trackers. Notice the one on my spine, my headset, and then the two on my feet. And here I'm picking up things and dropping things out of the room and it can show them there. Now I finally realized, oh, I must have did something right. So I'm looking at the actual what am I working with there? I think that's the Unreal animation. So I actually recorded this as an Unreal object and should be able to bring that directly in and apply it to the mannequin. Um, early on, I had some problems with some of the sensors not being seen, but here I just took off my headset, so that's why I'm stooped over like that. All right, so here is it actually working with the Unreal system. And again, this is where I figured out that you had to extend your arms. So I brought in, followed their instructions. Now I couldn't find their actual project. So I just brought in the, uh, the HTC VR, or the um, VR example. And then there you go, I'm dancing. So I noticed that the motion is pretty fluid. Um, you'll see a little bit later, the only problem that I had is when I extended my hands way up, but uh, we'll have to get a little bit closer to them. There, you can see it shimmer a little bit. As soon as I extend my arms way up, uh, I seem to have lost some tracking there. But again, you got to make sure that your system is properly set up too. And I may have there, see I'm wobbling a little bit. And then I'm moving my head. And you can barely see it, but his head moves a little bit. So it actually seemed very fluid, worked really well. And uh, so again, I don't know if the price is 550, um, but if you need options that work right out of the box with both the Unreal and Unity uh, engines, that might be a direction to go. Okay, so let's look at uh, Yuri's uh, system. And uh, so one of the things I did immediately was turn his project into the uh, Vincent bedroom or but I noticed right away I had some problems. He uses a Raycast and 
I had to move the sign because it wasn't activating. There we go. So I actually click on it. So it gives you options there that you can choose from. And then what I'm doing there, I'm going back and forth, is that you have to line up the controllers uh, with each of your hand and then also look at your feet and make sure your feet trackers are lined up with those on the ground. So essentially you're becoming part of the mannequin and that's the unreal mannequin. So I just finished it up. So I'm ready. And he's this little project he created is kind of nice. He creates two um, projections or actually one projection. So you can see a reflection to your right. And then he also has clones of the mannequin. So you can see them moving in front of you, kind of like what I did with the Orion system. But he provides these out of the box in the example of the sample project. And so what am I trying to do now? Again, remember, I'm having a little issue with the ray casting, but I think it has to do. And I found this when running my own uh, project is that if you have things that get in front of the ray cast, even if they're invisible, it can cause it to be blocked. Um, so I probably like that door may have been a problem. Okay, so now I'm just going to go over there and there. See, there I am. So this, if you look closely, you'll notice if I don't move my or rotate my hands correctly, uh, the, the inverse kinematics uh, seem to not uh, work as well. But, you know, it's just something that you have to keep in mind. Also, you got to make sure that uh, you do get those where your hands are at. I may have messed up and not got them there. Um, the fact is that they're still being shown with the hand is a good idea. Now, he's made a suggestion that if I use this within an environment, I should turn off um, root tracking. And I haven't tried that yet. Um, and I think that's because uh, that may limit the interaction like I'm doing here. But it seemed to be working pretty well. So I'll have to try out what he's talking about and see what kind of difference there is. So here I'm trying to play around with it. But as you notice, I'm walking around and then I could actually record this. And there I'm trying and because I didn't put the little object inside the room, I can't target it. So I can't quit in that manner. So here's a little video that I did with a captured image. Let me... So it's a little erratic. Yesterday I had some issues um, just getting in the tracker, but there I am walking around. So I know where the objects are in the room and then I can basically avoid them uh, while moving around. So it's a much more realistic uh, depiction of movement. Again, that's more my issue than the system. Um, you got to make sure you not only your trackers are all set up and charged properly. I think one of them had a weak battery and it seems to disrupt all of them if they're not all properly tracking. But uh, yeah, it's it's really nice because you can get realistic interaction with the different objects and record that and then bring that back in and apply that to each of these. So I was really happy with the performance in all these. All right, let's look at the last one. And that's the Unity system. This one's kind of weird, so brace yourselves. Um, he, he chose a woman, so you get to play a woman. So if you're a woman watching this, obviously it shouldn't be so unnatural, but being a man, it was a little interesting. So there I go. Essentially, you do the same thing. You come in and you basically assume a T pose where she's at, bring them up. And then you press one of the, uh, I think not the trigger button, one of the side buttons on it. And notice that the little cubes there represent the sensors. There we go. I'm ready to go. Now, he provides in his demo, uh, this I guess came from Daz, the model that he's working with. Um, so... Essentially, you assign the skeleton structure to his little um, his little script that he's put together. And then from there, um, you essentially, 
it'll sign uh, the different trackers and controllers. Now, what I found in all these systems is the trackers are a pain uh, because each of them have their own Bluetooth dongle and their Bluetooth dongle um, has to be paired with each one of the trackers. And it just isn't a matter of holding the button down on the tracker for it to, or at least in my case, it, you literally have to hook it up to the USB so that it recognizes that there's a tracker. Then you do the tracking controller, then you unhook the USB connection, and then you hold down the tracking and then it locks in. And you have to do this three times. And then for whatever reason, my Steam VR system forgot that it had the trackers and there I am waving. So one of the things that I thought was really cool here, and obviously is a very low end, if you're working in research, um, you might find that all these systems here might be very useful because it really gives the illusion, especially if you have the object looking back at you, um, is interacting in the same way that you are. So it's like a mirrored approach to something. So if you are working, let's say in medicine and you're working with somebody who has uh, problems moving, and I just read an article um, that they're starting to use VR for people who have uh, phantom limb situation, especially those who have some semi-paralysis, imagine the ability to be able to move and see your movements um, presented back to you. And clearly I don't look like that woman, but the fact is that I look like a woman it was a very weird experience. So the the empathy factor that can be presented from VR, I think is very interesting as well. So there you go. There's the multiple systems. They all have advantages and disadvantages, obviously. Uh, if you want the most polished, you got to get out the door running on any of the systems. Are, uh, obviously the Iconen, sorry, Ikinema system um, or I. Yeah, I'm just going to say Ikinema system. I, Orion may be your best solution, but again, it comes with a price. Uh, they didn't get back to me on if they had educational or indie pricing for it. Uh, so hopefully I'll know something about that by the time I bring up the next tech closet. But uh, until then, um, there you go. So let's look really quick. So if you've got to go, as mentioned, this is an hour long, so we're going to get into a couple of other things. Uh, one of them is... Like I said, I remoted into my system, so I should be able to bring that up. And if I did this right, I should see my whole screen. Uh, so here we go. Now it's cut off again. Well, it's not too bad. Okay, so here we go. So yes, I clutter my desktop. All right, so over on the right-hand side, I set up a bunch of icons. So we can start with the Breckle first. And if everything's still working, I should still have my Steam VR set up. So let's actually look at it. So here we go. It's showing one. Um, we had one tracker turn off, one controller, and then uh, obviously we had one device. The other thing that I noticed too, with these uh, trackers, they've got about four or five hours and you better pay attention to that. They didn't provide any beeping. It does give you a little alert in this panel with a little like light red lightning bolt to indicate that you're low power. Um, but once they go out, you're shot. So I would highly recommend if you're going to be tracking the next day, make sure all of them are charged. And again, each of them require their own charger. Each controller requires their own charger. So you might want to get one of those um, USB charging systems and five, what is it, five micro USB cables so that you can charge them all at the same time from one device. Uh, it does not include a little power pack. It does include a long USB cable, micro USB cable, as well as a little, uh, what do you want to call it, a little dongle and a little holder um, that at the end of this USB cable so that you can extend it, which I highly recommend. Um, I have just kind of put them on my desk and didn't actually put them towards my capture area. And I think that may have caused some of the problems earlier. All of them now are extended. But again, remember what I said, you have to take the cable off. I guess you could just have another USB cable free, but you have to basically disable that one Bluetooth device, plug in the, uh, the tracker, then select pair, and then plug in the Bluetooth and then pair it. It was a little bit of a 
a pain in the butt. I may have been doing something wrong, but I tried a couple of different ways and that was the only one that seemed successful. And again, if they remember that they were trackers, uh, that's not a problem, but I woke up this morning and tried to get it all up and running and had to go through the whole process again. And so it was a little bit of a pain. The other thing I found out, and I don't know if it's just unreal, I have an extra pair of controllers with another HTC Vive system. And I do have a reflashed uh, Steam dongle that works with them. And it's seen, Steam, excuse me, seen in Steam VR, but it is not seen in Unreal. And I don't know if that's just something that I need to look more into. Um, but if you're planning on using an extra pair of controllers, I'm not too sure that that will work. I only tried it in Yuri's uh, Unreal application, so I don't know if that would work in others. It may. I know that it would probably work in uh, Jasper system since he just basically records everything that's seen by uh, the OpenVR system. So again, this just could be Unreal. So more than likely it'll work in Orion, uh, Orion as well, but I did not try that. So if you got a few controllers and you can get yourself an, an extra, like I said, a Steam, controller for their um, handset, uh, you might want to do that. You just have to make sure that you reflash it. And there are some links out there for that. Okay, so back to this, as you can see, some of them are missing. So let's jump into Jasper system real quick. And Okay, so that's interesting. And I think the problem here is that because I'm doing a remote connection, um, it did not initialize my OpenGL, so I'm not going to be able to do that here. But you can see the layout of the panel, and then all of your trackers and uh, sensors show up in that panel, just like you saw in the video. And then here's your control, and then you have the option of turning audio on and off, turning on the camera, which is the camera. It'll be interesting what effect that will have, and Jasper's probably already looking into it with the new HTC Vive Pro with two cameras. Um, if it allow you to record the dual camera output, now, that could be very interesting. And then as mentioned, he provides VVH and FBX, very similar layout as his previous. And like mentioned, you could turn on different things. And again, I do not understand or I'm not aware of why the preview uh, seemed to stutter a little bit and had a slow frame rate. So I'll have to ask Jasper about that. All right, so maybe I'll have this problem with all of them, but uh, let's move into the Orion system. So it's a very simple uh, interface. And then your options, you just basically pull down here. You have different options here as far as what you have set up. You could use forehead tracker, hand trackers and elbows, as well as the feet. So keep that in mind. This also includes the feet. I think that's something that's mandatory and also I believe a hip or a lower spine is also required. So in this case, you have one, two, three, four, five, six trackers. Oh, I'm sorry, he even has trackers on his hand. So you have eight and that's all that's included. So for $800, you can do this um, and without having a headset. And then you can go on to other options. Oops, that wasn't what I wanted. And notice they change. So it's kind of a, a good visual cue. So there's the HMD and hand controllers. Again, you need three uh, mandatory trackers for your feet as well as your lower spine. All of them seem to require that except Jasper's system. Okay, and then you have the HMD hand controllers and elbows. So again, what happens when you're utilizing, especially with an IK system, if you provide more joints, it becomes the interpretation becomes more accurate. And then we have elbows. But one thing I did or haven't noticed is that they don't have any for any of the knees. It's basically the elbows. And I have noticed if you don't rotate your arms correctly, you will not get accurate movement in your arms. So kind of keep that in mind when you're doing this. So the other thing is, I'll go through the options. You can do live. You can record that live and give it a prefix number. And then you can play back previous. So that's kind of a neat feature. In fact, I should be able to. And let me put this off to the side. And then uh, we'll actually do the test that I did earlier. OK, so I hit close. And then I can turn on the viewport. And it just died. So again, I'm wondering. I don't think they like the fact that I'm doing this remotely. 
Let's see if it does it again. Yep. All right. So if you saw the earlier video demonstration, I was using uh, the viewport. All right. So let's look at some of the other options because clearly I'm not going to be able to do this remote. Your output, you can identify your um, skeleton. This is important for the RTSP connection because you want to make sure that your labeling in the instructions match this, your port number matches, and then your output avatar, as mentioned. Oh, that was good. So my system just died. Oh, well, well, that wasn't good. So on that note, uh, hmm. and that was my laptop that died. So let's see if it comes back up. So, well, I think that gives you a pretty good idea. Um, as mentioned, if you wanted to hang on there, let's see, I'm, I'll let it come back up and hopefully we can bring this back up again. So there you go. I rarely get green screens, but I get a lot of them lately. It's probably because I mess around with too many things. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we're back. Apologize for that. All right, so here we are. Um, you have different uh, characters. You have the obviously Unreal Engine 4 mannequin, the Unity Chan, and two Ikinema, female and male. And then the Genesis, which is part of the DAS um, um, skeleton structure, and then a biped, which I probably assume is just a general um, animation, or it could be, I think that might be uh, a 3D Max, if I remember correctly, or even, yeah, I think that's what they call there. So, so you have a standard number of skeletons, so you can immediately go to work and then be able to bring these right back into an application. Um, you can then customize the actor, so you can identify exactly where each one of the tracking points are and their joints. <clears throat> and again, I did not test that. And then you can record, in this case as well, FBX or BVH. You can identify a calibration delay so that, uh, for instance, once you click a button, it gives you time to actually get yourself in place. And then enable feet to floor and then enable basic logging, as you can see, is not a default. And then <clears throat> licensing. Um, in the demo, that licensing didn't work well, and then obviously this is 1.0. So there could be a few bugs. They might actually have more. This hasn't been out very long, but it seemed pretty clean and worked pretty well. Um, so something to look at. And then uh, let's see if this works. Again, I don't know if this will work remote. I immediately created a Unreal project for it. So let's see what happens when I do this. <clears throat> something the system that i have here was like really running slow especially in this initialization process and so i found out that my water cooler had stopped kind of the pump started stopped working so my processor was running between 70 to 90 degrees centigrade so it probably was just throttling down uh, so needless to say, once that was replaced, uh, things were started working well again. All right, so let me go ahead and pull up the level that I created, which is, like I said, just created the standard <clears throat> VR map. And then per instructions, um, imported their FBX and then created a blueprint for that, uh, their FBX. Let's see where it's at. This animation blueprint, and I'll go ahead and bring that up. And 
go to the event currents. We want to go to the anim graph. Oh, yeah, it's off to the side. So essentially, all you have to do is bring in the Orion stream. But keep in mind, I didn't tell you that you had to import a plugin. Just read the instructions on that. Essentially, you just copy the plugin folder into the Unreal uh, plugin runtime folder and then just launch Unreal. And then come in here, make sure, like I said before, this says localhost. Port number is 3883 or whatever you chose in the actual application and skeleton, which reminds me, got to make sure the executable is up and running. Otherwise, this doesn't work. And then they say to select reconnect. And then just connect it to the final animation pose. Once you do that, you can just run this in demo mode or you can create an executable and just go to town watching yourself move around. It's kind of fun, I guess. Or as in my case, um, so one thing I didn't notice and I'm pretty sure is just go back to the Orion and set up record. So let it record your animation while you're interacting within the Unreal environment. So that's about it. And it's pretty straightforward. I did not actually load up the Unity version, but I'm probably, uh, I found Unity plugins are a little bit smoother. It probably works just as well. All right, so let's close that out. We don't want to save. And let's look at Yuri's. So as mentioned, he has a full project. So all you have to do is make sure you have the pl uh, plugin in place. And I have modified his uh, startup project and added assets from chatting with Vincent so that I could put it in the room. Um, that's where I found out because more than likely I have some collision barriers here. I moved the the actual welcome to Vive mocap room up a little bit. And then I also move the restart and quit onto the desk here. So it's all within the room itself. They go away once you start capturing. So, and then you can interact in the room. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, if you want to sit in a chair, I would make sure to place the chair. And again, you can do this while you're in the room. And that way, when you sit in this area, I would probably use a stool. When you sit down, you'll have some support and actually be able to interact with it. If I had a few more HTC trackers, what I would probably do is put a tracker on the chair here, and then I'd be able to move around the VR chair, which would be the real chair, or maybe move, got that in reverse, move the real chair, and then it would move the VR chair. And that's something I'm looking forward to trying out too, because I think that would be pretty cool. For instance, put a tracker on the bed, and then you know exactly where it is. But literally create with cardboard or whatever a mock up of the room. And then you would be able to have tactile uh, experience while you're in the room just by using trackers. So that would be kind of fun. But the price goes up as you buy them, $99 a piece. That's not cheap. Well, I guess that's fairly cheap until you buy a bunch of them. And then the pain of trying to get them all paired uh, along with that, especially if uh, Steam VR forgets that you had trackers. Okay, so once you do that, um, um, you you know, like just hit play. And I'm not going to do that because it might crash again. So once you do that, <clears throat> you'll be in the VR environment and you just basically use the responses there. And uh, as you saw in my earlier video, just line yourself up with the mannequin and then go from there. He does have a few others. Let's see if I still have the, I think they're there, other test items. In fact, I've been working on my Vincent, but he has a cat skeleton. I think he created... Where did he say he did this in? Was it, uh, I can't remember, Maya or something? Um, yeah, I think he did this in Maya. And then uh, obviously the Unreal Mannequin, which is the, the new one. And then obviously the old Epic um, Skeleton. And then whatever your custom will be. And like I said, he has a new video up there if you want to do this yourself. So I would highly recommend looking at all his videos and reading his... Uh, his tutorials and his guides on doing this. It's fairly straightforward. Um, I've noticed that, especially in uh, Yuri's case, he has really good English. There's a couple of words that uh, uh, were curious, and I basically had to explore a little bit. But other than that, um, all the uh, 
information by all three of the uh, guides that I looked through. In fact, four of them, um, but three of them that I guess English is not their um, first language. All are done very well and easy to understand. Okay, so uh, there you go. Again, I'm not going to try it out, but uh, again, remember, copy the plugin just like with the Orion and then bring up the project and then you can just use the project as is to play around with. And then you can just bring in parts of the project or bring your stuff into their project in order to, to actually record it. And then it records it into the, uh, the main folder of your device where you can choose a different one. And there are plenty of other options that you can play around with as well. So it's fairly sophisticated. Uh, and uh, so just go from there. Highly recommend it. Uh, actually, I recommend all of them, but money is short, so only one. And probably will be the URI system, uh, unless I can get a good deal from uh, iKinema, but we'll see. All right, close that one out and get into the final one, which is the Unity. That one, uh, I will launch Unity first and just pull up the project. And it happened once before. Takes a little bit. So there you go. And uh, make sure, because he has an old version of the Steam VR, make sure you update it to the latest. Accept all, hit OK, and then basically hit the play button, and then you can interact. But again, make sure that you have the latest version of Steam VR. I'm using the beta version, seems to work okay. And make sure that's all installed correctly. Make sure all of your trackers are set up properly. And then uh, once that's all done, as this particular project already has a character set up, uh, you can work within that character. Now, one thing I didn't notice, and uh, I didn't put a lot of time into it, I don't know if this one records. so. Um, that's probably something that you're going to have to figure out yourself and uh, set up for this where the other three systems do have a record functionality. Um, this is something that I did not notice if it had one. Uh, so you'll have to create something yourself in order to record the, the, the motion capture for it. Okay, so that's about it. Um, you know, I obviously I'm not going through a lot with the Unity system. Uh, it's pretty easy. Just launch the project and it even works in the new uh, beta of Unity and make sure you update the Steam VR. And that's about it. Probably update Steam VR before launching the project. Okay, so that's about it uh, on the different motion capture systems. Um, I will make sure all the videos um, I put up uh, later, as well as links in the show notes of everything we've talked about. So if there are those of you out there, God, I can't even talk anymore. Sorry. Let me get a little drink. If, or, if there are those out of you out there that want to see the Acer in action, again, I have not tried that yet. I'm assuming that I should be able to just launch it by hooking up the, uh, <clears throat> the Odyssey system, but we'll see. And uh, let's do that. It was nice. One nice thing about the other laptop that I have. Is it had two external video ports I had a dual port as well as an HDMI so I could run test um, here. I plugged in the HDMI so that you could see the screen. Actually, you can't. You're looking at me. But now I'm going to have to disconnect. You're listening to All Things 3D, where we talk about the world of fabricating, designing, and capturing in the third dimension. So I guess there's one thing that I can do before I plug in the headset. If you're not, if you don't have one and you've been thinking about getting a uh, 
mixed reality headset uh, with the controllers, which I have right here. The controllers are a little different. Well, they're still a pain in the butt. So it may be updating, so I should be able to go through there and work on this. Um, you have to go in and pair the Bluetooth devices. So you go into devices, Bluetooth, and uh, hit add Bluetooth. And then open up the battery panel. And there's a little button. So pretty sure we have to turn it on first. And then you click, there's a little at the bottom. Let's see if you can see that. Right, yeah, this middle screen, let me jump to my bigger screen. So right below the batteries is a little depression that you have to push. And then if you notice the lights are blinking momentarily, that means your Bluetooth is working. <clears throat> Even though it's working, I don't see it yet. So let's try this again. So normally it will show you what type of device it is. So I don't know why. There it is. Okay, so just choose it. That's it. So that's one. Remember, you've got two. So essentially, just repeat the process twice. Let me jump back to that screen so we can see it for a second. You're listening to All Things 3D, where we talk about the world of fabricating, designing, and capturing in the third dimension. shows up, and this is the left one. Assuming the other one was the right one. We're done. So these are set up. I'm pretty sure the headset is set up by now. And it's saying, check my display cable, which obviously is the case. I don't have it hooked up. So I will do so now. I'm I'm thinking that I could probably, let's see if I can you know, take a little bit of time. Um, you could probably use a splitter for this. I have not tried it. And it may or may not work. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the cable. So you're going to lose that. And then we're just going to go to my main headset. So yeah. Okay, so I should be able to turn the put this on now. Okay, so let's see if I can do this so you can see the screen these off to the side. Yeah, you can see it works great until you realize the glossy screen. So okay. Well you can see part of it. That'll work, huh? Okay, so with that being said, let's hit next. So it did find my headset, tell me about it. It's saying everything is set up. So let's see if I see something.
<laughs> well, that was bad. I only have one of the controllers with me and the other one's from the HP system. Now, let's see if I can close this. Still operate. All right, I'm just going to do desktop. But what I found with desktop that's really kind of interesting is when you use the desktops, let me see if I can bring this in a little bit more. If you center it properly so that it knows where you're at sitting, so then when you stand up, it's accurate, you don't have to have a boundary. So you can pretty much walk wherever you want. Obviously, you can walk in the walls, but um, I did find that that was pretty, very, very interesting. Let me see if I can do something so that I can put myself in the picture. Yeah. Okay, so essentially, I'm going to go ahead and center. <laughs> Great. So all that, and it's now going to be downloading some more stuff. So... If this takes a little while, uh, you're welcome to just do something else and come back and I'll see what happens. But uh, sadly, I noticed this happened once before. Why this is not all included uh, as soon as you make the major download. I don't know if you've had a new laptop lately, um, but most of them you spend about 20 to 40 minutes downloading and installing the latest. I'm assuming it's the uh, fall creator. Um, Windows update, and but I don't know what we're downloading now, or even if we are downloading. So that's kind of disappointing. But so far, it does seem to be working. And again, the reason to try this versus some other systems is that I will have the option uh, with this, with the MX150, of doing better than standard uh, integrated graphics that if you remember, Microsoft touted that their mixed reality systems can work with. I have found the results to be less than desirable. They work, but at a lower quality. So this might be a great, um, what do you want to call it, in between, especially if your only um, task is to uh, provide visualization and also to provide mobility um, because it's got a large battery, which means it should be able to handle one or two hours. Uh, build a little special bracket for it so you can put it on your back or on your front. All right, what do we got here? Well, that was a little disappointing, but faster than I thought it would take. So let's go ahead and start. So like I said, add the 40 minutes that it took to whatever update when you first get it. Uh, the other thing that I found a little disappointing, but not surprising, Acer has what do they call it, crapware. Uh, that is still on this system. So that's a little bit of disappointment, but so you'll have to spend a few minutes, maybe longer, getting rid of it. Uh, they've got Norton antivirus, and in my opinion, 
Windows works fine. Just make sure you do all the updates. Uh, and then there's a few other tools. So let's try this again. All right, so we'll just use this, we'll do this again, center this. All right, I'm in. And do we see something? Let's see if we can mirror this. Interesting. This version um, does not have the feature that allows you to mirror directly to the screen. So you only get this unless there's something else I haven't turned on. I've noticed some of my newer builds of Windows do not have this feature. But uh, just to say, I'm in it. Let's see if I have one controller that can be seen. The other thing to keep in mind is that laptops normally put themselves in a, we're going to call it a low power mode or a battery conservation mode. You make sure that you put this at a more maximum power. If you notice there was a warning on the screen that told me that, um, that I needed to plug it in. And normally it's because you're only running at uh, a little bit less desirable performance. Okay, so as mentioned, I can't show you the screen, but uh, one of the things that uh, you go through if you're using a mixed reality headset is learn how to do a few things. And then from there you go into the cliff house and then from there you can load Steam VR. I'm going to try that with this and uh, I will report back through a tweet and on Facebook on how well that went. But uh, so far, it's nice. Keep in mind, the Samsung is about $500. It's not on the low end, um, but it is one of not only the, the best mixed reality headset out there, but it is, um, what else is it? It is one of the better headsets, period. And I really like the tracking system they have in it. It's called Inside Out. Um, I call it Parallax. Um, some people call it... Uh, stereo camera, uh, positional tracking, and our slam. And due to this, this is what gives it its ability to do this. I also found out if you have enough, excuse me, enough, what do you want to call it, background noise, uh, that you can use it outside as well, and if you've seen some of my other um, videos. So one of the reasons why I'm motivated to do this, because that would allow me to basically put this in a backpack. I wouldn't suggest doing that because you would contain the heat, but making some type of bracket, which I'll probably design for. It. And uh, let's see where I'm at now. Yep, I've got a, a screen. Well, it is definitely working. Um, I do believe the video um, resolution or 
image is less than uh, running it on a faster machine. But again, if I turn up the performance, that may change. But it does seem smooth, uh, at least as smooth in the cliff, cliff house as running it off my Nook. So that's a good thing. But the important thing is you can get this tablet for, I mean, this, this um, notebook for, gosh, less than 700 if you really look around. Um, actually, no, you can't. Maybe about 760 but again, after adding all the components, the batteries and everything that I use in order to make my um, backpack, which actually performs a little bit better, but I don't know how much better. Um, and it also perform, outperforms a Nook. You still need a little LCD panel uh, with touch capability as well as the battery pack. So this might be a great solution. The only downfall, it doesn't have a touch screen, which would have been nice. Um, but once you're in the VR system, um, I'll have to see. Let me try it right now. Yeah. So you're also going to have to disable the switch that uh, prevents the system going to sleep, which I just did. And uh, and also making sure that the screen, I'm pretty sure you can get away with the screen going to sleep. You just can't let the machine go to sleep. But it does disable the, the panels inside the headset. Uh, or puts it to sleep, and I had to work around that with my other designs by faking it, by actually hooking up a panel and making believe that it had an LCD panel all the time, or some type of display panel. So <clears throat> I'll have to work with it more, but uh, it appears, as you can see, the the ability to actually hook it up, other than the updates, is fairly quick. Um, so it's one of the things I like about the mixed reality system, and you don't need the light towers or the cameras like you do with the Oculus and the HTC. So I can understand the advantages. Um, but the fact is it is still pricier if, since you can get what 379 an Oculus system. Um, is it worth the extra hundred dollars? Yeah. I think you can get it for about 479 now. Um, that'll be up to you, but it does seem to have a little bit better quality. And uh, it can work with Steam VR. I have tested that works pretty well and that keeps working better and better each day. Um, I'm just wondering if that extra layer uh, presents a problem, but I think they're optimizing it more and more, and it hasn't really given me any issues. So there you go, that's about it. I'm actually, gosh, it was supposed to be an hour, and now it's almost two hours. So thank you for joining me. Uh, I guess I've got one viewer now, everybody else dropped off. So I hope this was worth your time. And if you uh, have any questions, just drop me a line, either in the YouTube, uh, video when this finally finishes up, uh, or uh, send me an email at info at allthings3d.net, and uh, I will be happy to respond to it. And if you got any ideas of what else I should be doing on the show, other than my own, let me know. And I will be happy to look at other ideas and, and present other information. So thank you, and enjoy your weekend. And I'm thinking Friday might be a good day. Uh, to do this. So I may just keep the Friday. So if not, just look in my tweets or uh, YouTube, not YouTube, yeah, YouTube or Facebook to see uh, what date I do this, but I'm probably going to do it on Friday. Uh, that seems to work well and gives me a little more time, at least from a shipping perspective, since that was the reason this one was delayed. All right, enough talking on my part. Bye, happy weekend, and see you next time in the 3D Tech Cave.